Hey guys, what's up? <laughs> so today I'm going to show you how I created this sort of Omni demon inspired, I don't know, creature. But yeah, um, I use, so today for the red I've used the cake palette. So it was um, my first time using it and it's super pigmented. I really love this one. But um, yeah, I'll let you guys know all the other products that I use as well. And I hope you enjoy this scary look. Hey guys, what's up? So today we are going to be doing a super spooky ookie makeup transformation. Here I've got my blue glue stick because I don't feel like shaving my eyebrows off today so I'm going to do my best to cover them up. The reason I like using a colored glue stick, some people in America they like to use the purple Elmer's glue stick but we don't have that here in Australia so I'm just gonna make do with this little guy. But um, this one, the blue stick is not as pigmented as your purple Elmer's glue. You can see that it does have a slight like tinge of like a baby blue to it though, but once it dries, it is completely clear. Yeah, I'm just taking my flat sort of um, fine tooth comb and brushing my brow hairs up. And I've seen people block their brows a million different ways, but this is just the one that works the best for me. And the aim of the game, what we're trying to do here, you can see I am very impatient. So I am whipping out my blow dryer, <laughs> dry these babies. And I'm just wiping away any extra glue so it doesn't make my eye makeup and eyeshadow look patchy. So I just want to make sure I get off all the glue that's not on my eyebrows. And then I did three layers of the glue and I repeated steps one, two, and three, three times. So I would do glue, brush it up, and then dry it. I repeated that process three times, so now at the very end, I am applying my translucent powder. I say the number one issue that most people have when coming, covering their brows, they're not patient enough to wait for the glue to dry before they apply their next layer of glue. So sometimes I have to make myself wait a couple minutes, I'll listen to a song, or as you can see, a hair dryer that will be your best friend okay so I'm using this new technique where I set my face and primer so I've already put a primer on I set my primer with a translucent powder so that keeps my makeup from creasing in the oily areas so here I've just got a peachy sort of colored color corrector this one's from my KVD vegan beauty cream contour palette and I'm just using this to cover the brows when you use a peach color it's going to cover up any like darkness or black a lot of drag queens will use this if they're covering facial hair and beards as well but yeah just blending that in with my beauty blender bouncy 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 We look okay, we're starting to look like a human being. Okay, so I'm just gonna put on a little bit of my foundation. I'm using the Tarte Amazonian Clay Fairlight Beige. I like having a foundation on underneath of any time I'm doing like a white face paint or any sort of face paint at all. I just feel like it makes the makeup go on smoother and I've always done it this way, but you don't need to. Sometimes like if you're in a rush, like the face paint will give you enough coverage um yeah but i just really hate the redness in my skin so i like to cover it completely that's why i use a full coverage foundation and then do my face paint on top so the paradise aqua makeup i think it's like 
Mayron Paradise AQ. So this is a water activated makeup. So I've just got this little spray bottle here from Daiso and I'm spraying that right on my um, cake face paint. If you try to use it dry, you're literally not going to get like any color, like it doesn't work. It's kind of like, um, if I can describe it, like a watercolor. When you get a watercolor palette and it's just like hard, like, you know, the paints are completely dry. If you, if you hear, that's me tapping my nails. <laughs> trying to emulate like what a dry <laughs> what a dry watercolor palette sounds like you know you know what I'm talking about right <laughs> let's do some nail nail click ASMR <laughs> how do you like that <laughs> oh my gosh but yeah if you don't use water if you don't wet your paints with water they are gonna be completely like dry you can't use them they're just like watercolor but yeah the more water you add the more thin and translucent the paint will be. So sometimes when I'm doing looks like Harley Quinn and I kind of just want it to look like a pale foundation, I'll use a lot of water. But if you want it to be a really opaque, solid white, you'll use less water. So here I've literally just done like one spray because this is gonna be like a sort of skeleton skull look. So we want it to be a pretty opaque white. Yeah, I'm just spraying my sponge here, make sure it's wet, and I'm just gonna blend any streaks away from that the brush might have left. And I did do a second layer of that paint as well. I just fast forward and sped up through that because it's pretty boring. It's pretty much the same exact thing that I did already. Uh-oh, we've got a problem. See what I've done to my eyebrow here? So if you are too hard with the brush or you play around with it too much, like I think I put too much water on my sponge, you will cause your eyebrow to peel. So don't be like me. Do as I say, not as I do. Because <laughs> it's harder to fix it afterwards. But yeah, I just blended a bit more of the white and tried to cover it up the best that I could. But yeah, today here I've got my Mehron palette. And I believe this is like the basic colors. So you've got like your red, orange, yellow, green, blue, all the primary colors and black and white. So here I'm just setting my face so we don't get any creases. Make sure that makeup stays in place. When I'm doing face paint, I really like pressing it on with a sponge because I feel like you're actually pushing the makeup into your skin. So especially if you're doing theater or drag, that's going to make your makeup last longer as well. And then I'll take my powder brush and just dust off any of the excess. Some people like to apply powder with a brush, but I feel like the powder, like you just do a dust of powder of your face, it's just gonna blow away, you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Like if you're not actually like packing it onto your face and melting it into your skin, it's not really gonna have any effect. The powder is just gonna literally blow away with the wind. <laughs> okay, so this red color that I have here, this is called Beachberry by Mehron, and I've mixed it with that deeper red shade, which is in the Mehron palette. So the color is literally called Red 801R. That's the shade that I mixed it with. And this is actually just a Sigma um, skincare brush. I love any of these sort of like paddle shaped brushes that are have really thin bristles because they spread the face paint easily without absorbing too much of the paint and you're not wasting as much paint. If you use like a really dense brush that has a lot of bristles, that is not good. It is just going to eat up all of your paint. For example, like if you have a foundation buffing brush or something like a flat top kabuki brush, great for foundation, but not so good for your face paint. You're going to end up wasting a lot of product. You're going to end up with more product on your brush than on your face. But yeah, you can even get paint brushes from like the craft store and stuff. I just make sure they say synthetic Taclon bristles 
animal hairs are a bit dry, sort of like porous, so they're better for like eyeshadows and things like that, but your face paints are just gonna wreck them. So make sure you're using synthetic bristles. Another one of my fave brushes, I actually really like the Wet n Wild foundation brush. It's what my teacher in makeup school, she used to call them um, cat's tongue brushes because they're rounded. They're just a round foundation brush, but they're shaped like a tongue or a cat's tongue, I guess. <laughs> but that's how I always remember. I will never forget her saying that because the first time she was like a cat's tongue brush, I'm like, what the is that? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Oh my goodness. She was from um, England, so her accent was a little bit different as well, and she had some like different words for things, so it was a good fun. <laughs> Dawn, that was her name. Love Dawn. <laughs> I wish she was my mom. Such a nice lady. So here I'm going in with my Lunatic Cosmetic Labs Contour Palette. I always love using this palette to contour when I'm doing like white face paint and skulls and things like that because it has the perfect sort of really cool toned shadow shades. And you can see here I've taken a smaller brush, smaller than the blending brush that we first used, and I am just like deepening up that line along the jawline. So I want it to blend the edges into the white but I want it to be darker along the edge where it matches where it meets up with the red and I'm doing the same just popping a little bit on my lips just going all around the edges but yeah um, what I was saying before you don't want to use a bronzer on top of white face paint or it can look really orange and like go like super brown and just like not nice looking so that's why I prefer using like a gray shade. Like if you don't have a contour palette like this, you can totally just use like a gray eyeshadow as well. Just blending, blending. You can see here I've taken my um, bronzer brush. Just adding a little bit of brown to make it a bit more neutral and I'm doing that same gray just on my collarbones here just to add a bit of dimension make me look really sunken in and skeletal like really creepy like I've been starved for a thousand years. <laughs> you know, I need to suck some souls out of people. Feast, feast on their, <laughs> feast on their life, life force. <laughs> I only get to feast every once, once a year, every Halloween Eve. <laughs> She's a hungry bitch. <laughs> we all know her. <laughs> Oh my god. But yeah, here I am just um, painting my bottom lip. And if you want to have a snack or something, do this before you got face paint on your lips. <laughs> That's my advice to you. Because I am going to set it with a ton of powder to keep the two colors from mixing together. Like it's alright if you've got your top lip and bottom lip the same color. For example, say, oh my god, put. <laughs> Oh my god, I got, I got powder in my mouth. I don't think that tasted very nice, but I had to leave that in there for the reaction. But yeah, if your top lip and your bottom lip are the same color, you're fine. But because I've got the white on top and the black on the bottom, I really need to set them with a ton of powder, like you saw, <laughs> to keep the colors from mixing together. So here I'm just using the black shade from um, my Lunatic Elvira palette and creating a really sort of sunken in shadow. I want it to almost look like I'm wearing a bone mask on my head. Like I've just taken someone's skull, 
carved it open and turned it into a, a mask. Ripped the bottom jaw off, I don't know, ate it, did whatever. <laughs> and I'm just wearing my poor victim's skull as my own face. You know, like a Leatherface character almost. But with my uh, R.I.P. <laughs> my, my poor victim's skull on my face instead. But like... My skin color is red. I'm like a demon or something. I don't know. Yeah, this really just came from my imagination. I've seen a lot of Oni demon characters. I've done the red demon body paint before. And this is my second time doing it. I just wanted to create something different from what I had originally done. The first time I did red body paint, it was more like a cute sort of anime demon girl <laughs> those sort of vibes so here I've added more of that gray contour shade that we used to contour the skull and here I'm contouring underneath the red so the black is closest to the jawline and then it gets fades down lighter to like lighter shades of gray before it blends into the red so here I'm starting to draw my teeth. And if you don't feel comfortable straight off the bat using your white face paint, you can totally make like a map with like a white eyeliner or even like a white eyeshadow just to map out where you want your teeth to go. But I'm just sort of free handing it today. I guess I felt really brave. <laughs> Sometimes I do though. I'm just like going real confident and like, Sometimes it turns out, but other days it's like, <laughs> why on earth did I do that? You should, sometimes I feel like I should listen to my inner monologue more, you know? As I say again, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> I probably wing it way too much than I probably should, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> But yeah, after I have outlined my tooth, I am sort of filling it in with more white. But you can see how I haven't filled in the middle of the tooth completely. I still want it to be like a bit lighter and then the highlights around the tooth to be like a, I don't know, like a darker white or a brighter white. That's why I've done maybe two or three layers on the outline and then the inside gives it more dimension and you'll see once it dries as well because the top of the teeth they've gone up onto the white skull but the bottom of the teeth have that red layer underneath so it almost creates a natural like shadow effect you'll see once it dries it's pretty cool actually if you don't want that to happen then I would suggest drawing the white teeth before you do your red face paint but that's going to be a little bit more time consuming because you're going to have to paint in between all the little cracks and crevices but if you're doing it for a photo shoot or performance or something like that i would suggest doing the white teeth first but you don't have to just my suggestion i feel like it would look more crisp okay so what i'm doing here i am taking my sephora I think is this is a four brush? I don't know. I'm taking my liner brush and I am creating little skeleton teeth lines. So I'm trying to make it even with the top lip and bottom lip, which is easier said than done sometimes. I just thought it would cool, be cool to have that contrast on the white skull and then also on the red. I thought it would look awesome. And you can see the teeth I've done kind of to follow the lines of my lips naturally. They're kind of rounded more on the outside. So I've got the middle line going up to my nose. That one's perfectly straight, but then I've kind of curved them up and curved them down, sort of following the, following the natural curve of my lips because I thought they would look, I don't know, more like teeth and not as much like someone just drew straight lines on my face. You can see I've blended them out a little bit here. 
but I ended up like, I don't know, not really liking them. So I changed them and do something else. I felt like it looked too much like a, I don't know, like spider. I was getting Spider-Man vibes. I felt like it looked, I think it's just the red. I don't know. I wasn't feeling it. So took a break, let the face paint dry, and then I go in and fix it later on. So here I'm taking that deep brown shade and I am just contouring around the sockets. And I do this with a shadow because I wasn't super confident what shape I wanted to do. If I went in with black straight away, I knew that it would be harder to fix. So here my face paint has dried. I've just given it a minute to set. And you can see I'm covering up those red lines with a bit of the red face paint. And I'm doing the same with the white face paint. But not all the way because I actually really liked how it looked with just almost like a whisper of those white lines peeking through. I thought it looked really cool. But yeah, don't forget, set those lips. <laughs> we'll try not to do the same thing we did the first time and get a big mouthful of it. I think I was a, a bit wiser. <laughs> Learn from your past mistakes, kids. So here I've got my little um, blending brush and I am, I say pick a side, pick a side of your tooth whatever wherever you want the light source to be coming from and one side for shadows the other side is going to be your highlights so that's what I've done I'm shading the inside half of the teeth so the for example imagine the tooth and then I'm shading the right side the left side of the tooth is going to be highlights and you want it to be consistent on all of your teeth as well. So all of your teeth have the same shadow and highlight pattern just so it looks more realistic. Here I'm adding a few little lines under my eyes and I've just done this with eyeshadow because I'm going to blend them out later on. Just trying to cre create some like texture in the skin, some wrinkles and folds okay i'm taking that same color and i'm actually gonna outline my teeth now and just on the side where we did the shadows before so i'm not outlining the highlighted side so i'm only putting that dark shadow of an outline i'm only doing that on the right side of each tooth or the inside of each tooth, whichever is easier for you to remember. I'm so bad with left and right, so for me, I always say in and out a lot. Like, when I say in, I mean like towards the center of the face, and when I say out, I mean like more towards the outside of your face, like your cheeks, your ears, your hairline. So I hope that makes sense, just for future reference. And again, because I wasn't super confident where I wanted to place the lines with the black face paint. So here I'm just using that black eyeshadow, the same one from my Lunatic Elvira palette. And I'm just using that to sort of create a map later on where I want to place these little kind of like, again, wrinkles for my fangs. I'm trying to create like these little mounds of like a like raised skin where the teeth are protruding and growing up and out of the face so that's what i'm trying to create like little little i don't know little skin pockets little bubbles i don't know just around the fangs i thought it looked really gross and creepy to add the wrinkles in <laughs> And again, I'm only adding that shadow on one side. So just this side that I have shaded. And I've taken a fluffier brush, just sort of blending it, touching it up with some more black. And you'll see I continuously do a lot of this. So I'll add black, I'll blend it, add more black until I'm happy with how it looks. And 
then I'm gonna do the other side really quick off camera and I'll be right back. And then before I know it, I'm looking outside my window because I filmed my video like right in front of my window so I get the beautiful natural light. I do use a ring light as well, that's not the point, but, well I guess it is the point, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> but um, I'll notice the sun slowly going down and before I know it I've lost track of time and I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> But like, I don't know, for me, makeup is just really therapeutic and I just get like on a, a bit of a roll and I'm just like painting my face for hours and hours before I even realize what time it is. But you can see here, I'm just shading in between my teeth. With that gray shadow, just to create a bit of shadow. And what I'm doing here, so right under my lip, I'm taking my brush and you'll see I sort of spin it. And when you do that, you're putting pressure, so that's gonna make the eyeshadow darker, see? So it's like a darker gray and then it blends out. So again, just mimicking where the shape of teeth would be. I thought that would be cool. And I try to be really light handed on the white face paint because honestly all colors are going to show up a lot more pigmented on white so you just need a little bit. It can start looking too dark really quick so I'd rather use a little tiny bit of eyeshadow on my brush or like I said right now we're using the Lunatic Contour Palette. I'd rather go in with a little bit and build it up rather than being like, oh my gosh, too much right off the bat and you're not able to fix it. So here I'm just taking a tiny bit of face paint and going over those white lines, but I'm not taking them all the way down. You can see I've kept these lines really small, but you can still see a little bit of the first set of lines that we drew, which look pretty cool. Almost like they're underneath the skin, like they're really faded out. But yeah, here I'm just lining my water lines. This is essential if you're doing any like black eye look. It will be really obvious that you haven't tight lined your waterline when you've got black eyeshadow or like a smoky eye on so just want to make sure you do that it'll especially show up in photos and look super weird if you don't okay so here i'm taking macabre and I am placing that on the center of the lid. I thought it would give a really creepy effect, like my eyes are glowing red if I'm standing in the dark. I don't know, I just thought it would be really creepy, almost like a red halo eye. I just wanted to do something different rather than just like a completely black, blackout skull. But you can do whatever you want, honestly. I think that would look cool too if you did like all black out 
because then if you do a skull, skull makeup and you completely black out the eyes, if you're standing further away and you have your model or yourself, if you close your eyes, and that black makeup is literally gonna like disappear. It is gonna look like their eyes are literally like black holes. It is such a creepy effect. I love it. Love doing skull makeup like that. So I'm just blending out like a shadow around the sockets to make it look like there's a bone there and it's raised. And I'm taking a little bit of white face paint here the Mayron Paradise paint from my basic palette and I am highlighting where the bone would be raised and I'm creating a shadow like around the bone like the parts of the skull that would be sunken in is where I'm placing the shadows and I've just defined those weird little lines and wrinkles under my eye sockets too just to add more interest here I'm painting some little like little bones on my nose I don't know <laughs> I just thought it would be cute make it more like an animal like I'm really into Kitsune fox spirits and even um, I kind of thought this makeup looked a bit like a lemur <laughs> so I don't know I guess I'm doing like lemur stripes you know how they have the rings on their tail but yeah a bit spoopy a bit animalistic we do a little bit of everything here on this channel. Furry pride. <laughs> and then I've just added my lashes and liner off camera and we're done hey guys i really hope that you enjoyed watching me create this look today and i'll insert a few photos of a little like photo shoot me and my husband did i hope you enjoy those and yeah i will see you guys next time